<laughs> and money shot. And then, um, so, fuck. See what I just did? I forgot what I was saying. No, you were saying uh, back then that the show with the cast and everything and how hard it was to pitch or something. Something like that. Uh, you remember what I was saying? Oh, yeah. So I said, thank you very much. And I said to Joel Silver, like, I'm doing these movies and I don't know if I want to commit to a television series. And he goes, I'm looking at your IMDb. And this, on the, Joel Silver goes, who are you, Parker fucking Posey? <laughs> That's what you're trying to be? That's why you're turning down X amount of dollars a week so you can go be the fucking ghost dog? <laughs> um, but what was amazing was I don't, I've never seen it happen since. Uh, and there was this weird energy to it where enormous celebrities would come to action and just surrender and just play ball. Like Keanu Reeves, Sandra Bullock, uh, you know, Tony Hawk. Like we had all these great – Only Otto, whites. Is that it? Otto and George. Only white, man. Ice Cube, man. <laughs> Ice Cube. Ice Cube was funny. That show never He's aired. He's a crossover. Crossover. <laughs> he, his show on action never aired. Did I talk about this ever? His action never aired. There's 13 actions. Eight of them are on the DVD. So there's like just five – floating around that never made it to air and ice cube i come back from lunch with hackett playing my uncle and i go hey where my daughter was visiting me at work that day on the show on mm -hmm. the, you know the character and i said where's georgia that was the name of the little girl uh and jack plotnik played my assistant he said uh she's in your office with ice cube and i go you left my daughter alone with a gangsta rapper Mm -hmm. And then we, we go into the office and Hackett takes his gun out and puts it in Ice Cube's face. Mm -hmm. But they're on the floor playing Go Fish. Like uh, it's a sweet thing. Yeah, like cute. Ice Cube's like sweet. And then uh, Ice Cube goes, hey, what's with all the heat? Pointing to the gun. And I go, you'll have to excuse us, Mr. Cube, uh, lately. And I'm just making some shit up. And it was all ad-libbed. I go, lately we've been having a lot of trouble with – um, and I, I pause. And Hackett goes, blacks. <laughs> <laughs> And he looks at me, and I go, bats, black bats. <laughs> that was all I had lit. Like, it was a <laughs> blacks. But that was a weird show, because you would just show up, and Buddy Hackett was, like, already there telling stuff. Hiya, doll. How are you? He, he was a uh, – he definitely is, like, a, a – Buddy Hackett is, like, a guy, like, you can never quote – I only know, like, two Buddy Hackett jokes. Because they're like, but I just love him. It's like quoting Jackie Martling. I, well, yeah. It's just <laughs> joke jokes. A man takes out his wand to live. You know what that is? It's a dick, ma'am. You'll yeah. explain it to her, right? Yeah, a lot of his jokes are like, uh, like, uh, you know, like right after World War II jokes, you yeah. know, which I always, I find that very manly and cool. Like, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I'm on leave, you know, like you know, today's kids, they wouldn't know what that, you know, it's like they're off from the military for yeah. a weekend. Like, I got a weekend pass, so I go into town, I'm looking for a little, a little something, you know. I'm like, looking for a snake trauma. Yeah. Because I want to throw an Arabian party for a friend, you know, like these long yarns and the payoff isn't that good at all. Yeah, but you're so happy that they're talking to you, you give them this crazy fucking laugh at the end. He was definitely ahead of his time. I guess he would be the first alternative comic. Hackett? No, I'm just trying oh. to think. There's storyteller. <laughs> <laughs> he was definitely the uh, – before UCB, there was Hackett. <laughs> I'll say one thing about Hackett. He loved – I knew him the last six years of his life. He loved comics. He loved being with us. Uh, Ralphie May, Jeff Ross, me. He would have loved you. Like he – adored comp he wanted to know what we were thinking he'd call you and just say what are you doing right now it's almost i know you're not a sports guy but um nomar garcia para played for the red sox and ted williams the greatest hitter that ever lived would just call nomar from like the florida keys at two in the morning and say i saw the game today when you struck out in the third inning what pitch was that and they would talk for like an hour about one fucking pitch and what mechanical thing you could have done to change it to hit that ball out or make contact oh, yeah. you got to keep the hands down son he talk about a fucking movie star good looks fucking ted williams jesus but hackett <laughs> would call and he always wanted to know i remember when he met nick swartz and he goes what do you open your show with when you do your show what do you usually open your show with and like hello and then that yeah and it's incredibly intimidating it's like a mountain talking to you well, and he, then swartz and said Oh, really? <laughs> like, he didn't know what to do. Like, um, and he goes, I usually do like an impression of a roller coaster. I say, uh, <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I was like, farts and AIDS. And I say, uh, is my impression of like a roller coaster? Full blown roller coaster AIDS. <clears throat> and then Hacker goes, do you explain to the audience? This is like, what do you tell me exactly what you say? 
Like, so that shit went on for like eight minutes before Nick realized, oh, he literally wants a fucking line reading yeah. of my opening thing. So finally, Nicky breaks it down for him, which is, it's humiliating to just do your act for like an old legend. And Hackett sits there and just staring at the wall, like the Dalai Lama or walking or somebody weird. I don't know if it was weird or it was enlightened, mm. but he just stared up into space. And then he, but like, it was clear we were not to leave yet. Right. And then he looks to Nick and goes, have you ever thought about trying not explaining to the audience what you're doing and just walk on stage and be on a roller coaster? And Nick goes, no. <laughs> I just <laughs> not, like never crossed my mind. And if I try it that way, it'll fucking bomb. Yeah. And he was right. Yo, that's but amazing. Hackett was a guy like you got – he'd always say, you got to keep peeling the onion. Nothing is ever done. You that's got, true. There's always – and you – I want to – don't let me forget that because your act is ex- an exact – um, version, living organism of what Hackett was always talking about, about peeling the onion. Well, I'm but more Nick, hack than Hackett. Nick, Nick <laughs> Leonard Hacker. <laughs> Nick walked out that night. We were backstage at some benefit. It was, oh. and Nick went out and just sat down <laughs> and imitated the roller coaster. <laughs> and the place fucking just stared at him. It's really bizarre. Usually it's like, here's my version of a roller coaster. He just does all the different faces, the excitement mm-hmm. and the screaming and all that. <laughs> then he just went out, didn't set it up and he ate it. And then afterwards, like, I knew Nick would never approach Hackett and I knew Hackett wouldn't seek him out because Hackett was already in his cups, like on tequila. Oh, uh, yeah. I hope I'm not talking out of school. <laughs> and then I said, uh, hey, how'd it go? And he goes, good. I go, hey, buddy, he tried it. He goes, how did it go? And he goes, not good. Uh, Nick just says, not good. Mm-hmm. Like kind of pissed off that he even tried it. And Hack goes, but you tried it. <laughs> no one's as brave as you in the whole show tonight. At least That's you true. tried it. That's true. And you know what it's like. You won't be as afraid next time. No. Hackett always said you got to peel the onion. You got to peel the onion. Nothing in your set or sets or your hours of material, there's not a frame of it. You can't isolate 60 seconds of your act, he used to say, that's finished. It's always evolving and moving and taking a different shape and a different tone and a different volume and a different stance. And you're a guy, not the country, but you're a guy <laughs> has a good soccer team. Listen, Power Gay. Listen, all right. You know what? I've been called a lot of things. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Colin and I were talking about this, about like we hate when a guy goes up and does like an – like a – like it, that's a his set. set. Yeah. Even like great comics like Richard Jenny. Yeah. I always felt like you're not talking to me. Like you're doing this shit by rote and this is a long, depressing road right. that you've been on and I am just a fucking stop – on mm. your railroad of this is what I say for exactly 49 minutes and then I just do the exact same thing. But you, but when a guy has moments of actually speaking, I don't mind a bit. How do I put this? I like when guys are real. It sounds so gay to be like, keep it real. But when guys are on stage keeping it real, like you have your set that In you the do. Moment. Yeah. But you, and I thought about this today when I was walking around, like, what am I going to talk to a tell about? I love talking about comedy, stand-up comedy. Yeah. Your stand-up comedy is so unique that you do have bits. However, every single one of your bits, <laughs> I would say 80% of your bits, routinely, every single time you say – you, and the 80% changes, you'll say – you'll ha- it's almost like you hashtag yeah. your bit – just to like a part of the room as an aside. Like if you walked in, I would do it to you. Like, right. Like I would make sure but it was I've, stuff that you but liked. But with me in the room and you not knowing I'm in the room, I've seen you do it. And it's almost like a net you're throwing out to let people that are hip enough to know. Like I know I'm doing a bit and me by me saying whatever this la- – punchline, et cetera. <laughs> and like you just saying like et cetera. Like people are hip enough in the room to go – it, this is all like, this is also what we do for a living is so foolish. And he's letting us in on the fact that, am I making sense? Yeah, I, I was just like, I smoked two a things, ton of hash right before you got here. <laughs> there's two things that you brought up that were, that were great. One of them is like Richard Jenny. One of them is me. Well, no, well, Richard Jenny, <laughs> who I, who I worked on his show, John Stewart got me the writing job on his show when he did the Caroline's Comedy Hour show. And that's where I really learned joke structure is from watching his act of like bit, Set up tags, tag, 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 act it out, tag it again. Like, just like how you can elongate a bit. But, uh, a lot of people have problems with like some of the stuff he did. But I will say that he was the last ultimate 
power headliner um, from that generation of yeah. comedy. He was the last and power. He's, a cont- he's one of the last content machines. Yeah, where it was just like an hour and a half of nonstop, like whatever it was. You know, Catholic school date. You know, they're hackneyed right. topics, but he would fucking. You know, at the time, the crowd could not get enough of it, and he would not let them rest. It was just bang, 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 bang. And like, as a young comic who was like, you know, you'd have one joke and then you'd be like, now what do I do? You know, you were like, whoa, this guy was like a fucking like, like loads and yeah. loads and like on your back, on your face. I like, it was like what I was like, we get Dropping it. We get it. Loads. I mean, like I, I learned so much from that too. The other thing that you said that I, I think is so true is that like when a guy goes up there and he's not, um, he's just doing it like, LA comic get, LA comedy gets a bad name because people are always auditioning. You know, like, yeah, they feel yeah. like if they do, like, you know, I'm a loser and but I live I in an apartment, but there's a ghost in here. Like, they keep, like, they have a theme to their act. Like, to me, that's the most boring type of comedy. I hate that kind of comedy. I love, like, a when theme? people, you know, like, when people, like, you know, what's my sitcom about? Like, well, listen to my act. You know, I live in a car and, you know, my best friends are porn, you know, what, whatever. Everybody had, like, a theme for a while. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I hate that kind of comedy. I don't, I don't like it. I hate, like, um, I do think – I don't think LA Comics get a bad rap. I think they're exactly – This as, was years ago though. As good talking. and – or bad as we think they are. Oh, I, I agree. I'm not putting down the town of that. I'll, but I'll tell people you, come like, out here to audition, Jay. You know, it's like you know, oh, yeah. what's your sitcom about? But and like your agent you, says make it – make your act about your sitcom. But I if you like go to that. like Uncab or yeah. like Upright Citizens Brigade, you'll see like a, like two out of eight guys that are – you go – this motherfucker's hilarious. Oh, absolutely. Like, this is crazy. But then you'll see six guys and you go, like, well, you were just jerking off all over 99 people. Like, this was ridiculous. But there's, there's better audiences. Too. Have you found, have you been surprised on the road? And I want to talk to you a lot about the road. And I want to talk, I do want, I have specific questions about Dave loves porn. Dave's old porn. And I do love porn. Go ahead. I do love porn. And I remember when What's we were at SNL sub- one time, at, when we were at SNL one time, um, we both snuck out to go to a, a peep show porn theater or something like that. <laughs> in the mob, and I was like, the mob, I was like, yeah. it's like, you, you know, like when you do something for the first time and you're like, you know what? I'm going to end up spending a lot of money doing this for a long time. It was like, I felt that way. Like as I was walking back to the office, like feeling good. Like, oh, oh, yeah. Nothing like a glory hole to yeah. blow the dust <laughs> off a fella. Now that's an M&M store, by the way. <laughs> now that's a Staples no, run by was, a surly. It was the laugh factory for a while. Oh, that's true. Show World in, in uh, Times Square. But I like when you go to uh, New York, like Times Square, and like it, you can always say, like, that's a, now that's a Staples, and then you walk in and you see people who should be working at a peep show. You know, like the people, like oh, yeah. these surly inner We're city not college, fire you. inner city community college kids, like, what do you want? Yeah. Boulders? Like, look, we're not going to fire you, but you have to suddenly learn the what postage rates are. Yeah, or just <laughs> instead of giving change for a dollar, I need you to know how much a book of stamps costs because we're turning the whole place over. I, I I just can't imagine how like New York, like how it used to be so much cooler, and now it's just so whatever. See, I love it now too. I love all that Disney. But you're a family guy. It's like built for being having a family. But there's still, if you take the family out of it. If you get drunk or stoned and take a bike cab through Times Square, that's a lot of lights, man. Not wearing this <laughs> turban, I can't. No, you cannot. <laughs> By the way, you look very relaxed. You look happy. You look no, just I... totally like... <laughs> well, there's a whisker war going no, on. I not, think we started that not you. when this podcast started. You're a born killer, bunny. <laughs> so, hey, did you hear that shit about the gooks putting stuff in the grass, making us mm. pacifists? <laughs> We both yeah, you should like, like have like a Vietnam vet on here at one point. We both laughed like Muttley, just then. <laughs> <laughs> dueling Muttleys. Have you found this? One I want to ask you about the road. Yeah, go ahead. Um, uh, I think LA comics are just not as good because they don't have as many op- chances. You right. don't get to just go to the cellar, go to the strip, go to stand up New York. It's and about then stage time. Some weird restaurant is like, hey, we're having an open mic night. Come on by, and you just do it because you have nothing else to do. Stage time, yeah, uh, and. In New York, you're just surrounded by everything all the time. And you're surrounded by – like why would I know what a German tourist wears? Like right. a, an L.A. comic does, is never going to pull that out of his fucking bag as an ad lib. Like you know, like a German tourist walking around and like name the pants and the exact type of shirt, chest king jacket. Right. But because we're around it all the time. And Israelis. Like you're always around Israelis and you're around like Russian tow truck drivers and – these weird lot of, lot of Ugandan stimuli. men selling fucking watches. Like, that's nothing you're ever going to get in any other town except New York. Well, I, I'm not saying uh, LA. Con- I, like, I have no problems with, with – it's the, 
It's the ones that I have no problem. I think that there's no good or bad place to do comedy, and I'd say I'm New York say- is better. I don't. But I'm not def- saying LA comics are bad. I'm just saying no, the ones that would do their act of like you know. Don't I'm defend a single, your position on LA next- comics. That's not what I'm setting oh, you yeah. up for. No, but I'm just, I'm trying to backtrack opinion. myself and just go like I hope I didn't get out the word of like oh I don't like it. it's like it's the ones that like no, are you 